Hey everyone, this is Jonas with Accuracy and this is a little video to get you started with Accuracy setup on everything from transmitter setup over graphics configuration to how basic helicopter configuration works, how you set up your flyberless. We are gonna take a look at the very basics you need to get down in order to get Accuracy running. So if you just purchased Accuracy, if you are completely new in this hobby, I don't know, this is the video for you. So let's take a look. The first thing when you first open Accuracy is that you will see the setup wizard that will guide you through the basic initial setup process to set a couple things on the sim. You can either just run the sim and the wizard will pop up when you first open it. This also happens after a full user data reset. Or you can select the setup wizard menu icon on here like I'm doing and you will be presented with the same wizard. The setup for language, so just select the language. For this one, we're gonna use English. The default flyberless setting is grouped into four different flying styles, beginner, sport, aerobatic, and 3D. I will explain what these do later on. For my purposes, I want 3D. Then you can select your transmitter make. For me, it's the RadioMaster TX16S, but we have a bunch of transmitters, a bunch of different interfaces, like the Orange RX interface, uh, the Spectrum WS interfaces. But for me, it's just RadioMaster TX16S USB. Then you select your transmitter mode, one, two, three, four. One is right hand collective and aileron. Mode 2 is left hand, collective, and rudder. Mode 3 is right hand, collective, and rudder. Mode 4 is left stick, collective, and aileron. I fly mode 2, so I select mode 2. Then we select our USB device. Your plugged in radio will appear here. Radio Master TX16S. And then we hit finish. Now this has determined some things in the transmitter configuration already. We have a bunch of setup videos for transmitter configuration find a playlist on our YouTube channel, look for the one that suits your transmitter and your interface, and follow this video specifically, and then come back here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at my setup. One very important thing you need to make sure is that all your sticks in this menu travel to 100% plus and minus. If they don't, you will not get the proper control response from the helicopter. So if for example, your sticks only reach like, I don't know, 40, 50, 60% while cornering them. You want to come in here, hit calibrate, then go through this wizard, do what it says, and your radio will be calibrated properly. Then come back here and make sure you hit 100% in all directions. Once that is done, make sure your functions are assigned, mainly RPM 1, RPM 3, and throttle hold, which are the most important ones for flying. You can assign rescue if you want to practice your rescue reflex, but it's not really needed. Once you have checked all this and know where your switches are, again, refer to our setup guides for various radios. We are gonna look at some settings. The settings pane will generally allow you to set up the entire simulator apart from the helicopter. So we're gonna look at this here. This is my desktop PC. Uh, it will give you a readout of your operating system, your processor and your graphics card. In case you have any questions about setup and need to email us, send us a screenshot of this screen, at least this screen, because it really helps us get an idea about your system. You can use recommended settings to get a basic configuration going, and you can use auto configuration to allow the simulator to find the best graphics settings for your PC. Speaking of graphics settings, let's take a look at those. In this menu, you will find a lot of options. You can see that I have all these options basically maxed out because I have a gaming PC. Well, okay, it was a gaming PC in 2017. Now it's a mid-range setup, whatever. So if you are on a laptop or a MacBook, you will want to uh, select medium graphics. Some older machines may require you to run low graphics. What this does is it disables some of the PBR options, uh, physically based rendering which makes the models uh, less graphics intensive to render and it drops the scenery resolution. My recommendation is to always opt for the higher graphic settings 
and if in doubt, drop the resolution. For example, my MacBook Pro has like a 2.7K screen or something. I don't actually know the actual resolution from the top of my head, but it's very high resolution and the M1 processor just cannot quite push that resolution at the frame rate I want. So what I do is I usually select high graphics, which disables some of the advanced PBR options, but keeps the sceneries at a high resolution. And then I just drop the screen resolution a bit because it's a very, very high res, very high quality retina display with very high pixel density. So dropping the resolution will make the amount of calculations the graphics unit has to do way easier, but still retains that crisp resolution of the panorama instead of the other way around where we push all those pixels, but there's no information contained in these pixels because we have to switch to low graphics. Anti-aliasing is also a setting that can majorly impact your graphics performance. So if you're on a lower spec setup, you may want to drop this a little to take some load off the GPU. For all intents and purposes, if you're just starting out, set the target frame rate to your monitor refresh rate. Mostly that's 60 hertz. I have a high refresh rate gaming monitor, so I'm at 144 hertz. For advanced pilots, I would recommend setting the frame rate to actually double the screen refresh rate just to get a bit quicker response out of your helicopter. This may require dropping resolution or quality a bit, but for the flight feel, that's worth it. Workbench is just uh, a selection between room and hangar. In V2, you can also select the Halloween workbench we have, and that's just the default workbench you load into. The hangar is also a bit less graphically intense than the room if you're, again, on a weak setup. Then again, full screen, toggles full screen, self-explanatory. V-Sync synchronizes your frame rate to your monitor's frame rate. It helps smooth out the graphics, but it can also lead to the sim trying to achieve frame rates it cannot achieve. So if you're on a lower spec setup, have a 60 FPS screen, desperately want to run the sim, but can only achieve 40, I would switch off V-Sync and set the frame rate manually here. Similarly, if you want to run double your monitor frame rate, like I mentioned earlier, for advanced pilots, also switch off V-Sync. Hardware anti-aliasing is just a different way of uh, anti-aliasing done through the GPU instead of software. Rotor disk blur allows you to switch off blurring the rotor disk, which is a nice visual effect, makes it look more like it's filmed with a mobile phone instead of a simulation. Dynamic resolution is a new toggle, which will drop your re resolution if your frame rate cannot be maintained. Max details, which is helicopter level of detail on and off. Enable VR, self-explanatory if you're flying in VR, leave this on. Advanced lighting, if your PC struggles to handle the lighting of the simulator, you can switch this off and shadow self-explanatory shadows on or off. Audio settings, you can make parts of the helicopter and the ambience louder or quieter as you prefer. Regional, set your simulator to your region. And here comes the interesting menu, simulation. For once, you can set your default flyberless settings here. So beginner, sport, aerobatic, and 3D. I will show you once again later what these do. You can set our most important training tool, the simulation speed here, from 30 to 200% for practicing new maneuvers. You can set the blade disc opacity, so how opaque your rotor disc is, if you need that for orientation or prefer to fly with it less visible. You can adjust the threshold at which the blades will start slapping. Crash reset time is for the automatic crash reset. I'll just leave this at three seconds. And if you find the helicopter to crash too easily, you can cheat a bit here and increase its crash tolerance. 200% means it's indestructible. Two also important toggles are full control system simulation and aggressive CPU utilization. What these do is full control system simulation is a toggle we introduced to eight very low spec computers, which cannot hold about 420 or higher physics FPS. What it does is it skips the tail rotor control system because that's not too essential to flight field and we can actuate the tail blades directly with the servo output without the linkages in between, which saves quite a bit of performance. And aggressive CPU utilization means it just squeezes a bit more out of your CPU at the cost of increased energy consumption and more heat, but can improve simulation speed.
Then we have the data menu. Here you can verify the integrity of your game files or reset the entire simulator at once if you want to do so. Because this is a beginner's guide, we're gonna just go over basic settings. So we're gonna head straight into flight mode. If you just load the simulator up and hit fly, the first thing you will see is this helicopter here, the Logo 700. The Logo 700 is our default model. You will actually be in Venlo, but I chose Urcha scenery for this one. It doesn't really matter which scenery you start out in. Just pick one and stick with it. If you just wanna give it a try and head out to fly, switch out of throttle hold, take off and have a flight. Chances are your first flight will not go the way my flight is going currently, because if you've never flown a helicopter, there's a lot to consider initially. So why don't we take a look at how to make this first experience as pleasant as possible. If you move your mouse, you will see several menus pop up. These down here are mainly for navigation. These over here are to set your flight experience on the left side of the screen. First thing we want to do is toggle the HUD on, heads up display. This display at the top of your screen gives you a couple of very important bits of information. Your FPS is your display FPS. For example, my sim is running at 120 frames per second, so 120 frames are being rendered every second and pushed out to my monitor. If your sim cannot achieve the FPS you set in settings earlier, you might need to lower your graphic settings because you will need at least 60 FPS for proper flying. Physics FPS is telling you how fast the physics run. I mentioned a magical threshold of about 420. You do not really want to be below that. If you are, lower your graphic settings because those also influence physics FPS and attempt to boost your performance by using aggressive CPU utilization. Control FPS is mostly locked at 250. That's fine. Your velocity is the current airspeed of the helicopter in any direction and your rotor RPM is how fast your rotor is spinning. Camera settings can make and break the flight experience. So find the ones that are right for you. Default camera is pilot camera. You can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. I would recommend choosing a field of view where you can see the helicopter clearly, but you don't want to be zoomed in so much that you can only see the helicopter and nothing of the environment anymore. Let me demonstrate this. If I do this, and go fly. I cannot really tell where I am at anymore because the helicopter is just so large on my screen. It's really becoming troublesome. So I want to scroll out just a little so I can see where I actually am and then fly around. Tracking speed determines how quickly the camera follows. You can actually change the way the helicopter feels a bit with this. It does not actually change the way the helicopter flies, but if you set the tracking to a lower speed, for example, 1% is very extreme, but you can see how the helicopter moves much more on screen, and I can actually fly out of the screen. I know a guy, Steve Gladden, who loves to fly like this because it uh, teaches him the motion of the helicopter more or something, or if you increase it all the way, the helicopter will not move around on the screen anymore at all and be completely locked in the center. Auto zoom just zooms after the helicopter if you fly too far away. I usually just leave that on, do 50 and about 40 on zoom, and that's a good setting for pilot camera. If you want to have a camera mode where you can keep orientation a bit better, that would be ground in view. Ground in view also allows you to set a zoom level, even though that's only uh, a concern when you're a bit further away. You can set tracking speed and what ground in view does is it prioritizes the ground when zooming over the helicopter. So you can see I'm flying up here, but it's keeping the ground in view as long as it can without losing the helicopter and only then starts following the helicopter up while simul simultaneously zooming out. The idea here is that you can fly your helicopter like you would in real life, but never lose track of the ground like you would in real life and therefore know where you are in space relative to the ground. Smart view is mostly useful when practicing auto rotations. It's not needed in a beginner's guide. 
So just pick between pilot and ground in view. Free look is mainly there if you want to look at the scenery or want to get a specific screenshot of the helicopter. For example, I can set my field of view just the way I want. If I, I don't know, want this stuff and then fly here in a frame or something. We'll just stick with ground in view for now. Uh, cones. Cones are a little help for orientation practice, not really needed. Brightness, you can adjust saturation, brightness and contrast of the simulator here. In weather settings, you can adjust the atmosphere basically, also not needed if you're a beginner. Where it becomes interesting is flavorless. Because in the flavorless setup, you can set the way your helicopter flies. For example, I wanted to explain the differences between beginner, sport, aerobatic and 3D modes. Here we are. You can see in beginner, cyclic agility is at 181 degrees per second. Um, my collective range is limited. You can see that I can climb faster upright than I can climb inverted. Uh, these are all things affected by flavorless presets. If you switch your flavorless preset, for example, to 3D, you will see a lot of the parameters here change. Cyclic rate, cyclic agility is much, much faster. Air and elevator stop damping have been reduced to zero. The cyclic feed forward pass through has been increased. And if we hit apply, you will see that my helicopter really comes to life with much higher agility, much more collective thrust and that I can fly 3D more than I could before. And depending on your skill level, you will want to select one of these presets. For example, if you're a total beginner, select the beginner preset, it really, really tames down the helicopter. Um, sport flying is more like a yeah, I'm flying left to right, circles, maybe a loop, that kind of affair. Aerobatic is more of an F3N kind of deal where you do very precise 3D maneuvers and need a lot of precision. And 3D is just all out high performance, high agility, quick reaction. If you find your helicopter to still be too twitchy in a hover, so if you try to hover, and move the stick and find that the helicopter is ro rotating too fast or too slow, you can adjust that in the flavorless menu through cyclic agility. If you want it to be slower, lower the cyclic agility. 100 degrees per second, you will see immediately how my helicopter is much slower than before, even with the same stick input. You can see my stick input in, in the bottom right hand corner. And if you find that the terminal rate is fine, so we were at 181 or 2, here's 1, but the center sensitivity is too high. You can also increase your exponential, which tames down the helicopter around center. So let's do 40 expo, and I will demonstrate this. You see that around center stick, not much happens, but I have the higher agility at the end points again. This can help you with very small movements and small corrections. So find a setting that works for you and stick with it. Coming back to the flavorless, the remaining settings you will not really need for a beginner. These are the two most important cyclic agility and stick exponential. Collective range, you can simply select through this here. Uh, if you go to sport, the collective range should already be symmetrical. In beginner, it is not symmetrical. But in sport, you have positive negative thrust and can adjust your helicopter depending on what you want. Otherwise, collective range is accessible through the flavorless setup in the workbench, which we will cover in the next video. Tail settings allow you mainly to also set stick exponential. Just like I mentioned, if it's too sensitive around center, increase exponential. If it's too insensitive, decrease exponential. You can also set the tail rotor agility from 100 to 1000 degrees per sec. So if you're finding the tail to be too fast, drop this a bit, 273, whatever, and you will see that the tail is now much slower to turn 
and much more controllable. Again, find a setting that allows you good controllability, but not excessive damping, basically. anti visual TX is just this little thing in the bottom right hand corner. And that is pretty much it for the first configuration of accuracy. If you found this video useful, give it a like, subscribe to the channel and recommend accuracy to your friends. Let us know what you want to see in the future. Leave a comment below. And all that's left to say is have a good first flight with accuracy and happy flying. Bye.